Okay, it looks like we got this going. Hello, everyone. This is Donald Goofy 99 And I have decided to do yet another tier list for you guys, but... At first, this was going to be how I could... Excuse me, how I did with each Pokemon in Generation 1 in a solo run, but... I'm going to need a little bit more time to get that one done, because I'm still, like, I'm like, I'm currently trying to do Tauros right now, and I still have, you know, a few more to get out of the way. I was doing it by each evolutionary line, too, to try to condense it as much as possible, and to give each Pokemon kind of their own spotlight, in a way. But we're not doing that today. What we're going to be doing is kind of related to a solo run, but this is strictly based on my opinions on... Like, say, you were doing a solo run, but you were only allowed to use level up moves, would it still be possible? So S tier would be, oh yeah, very possible, you're barely going to have any struggle whatsoever. A kind of comes down to... Yep, should be possible, you're probably going to get stuck a little bit. B... Like, I would say pretty possible overall, just you may want to enable items to, like, boost stats at the very least, if not use potions. Yeah, some of them, yeah, looking over some movesets, and especially what I think their best moveset possible would be under level up, it's going to be a bit of a doozy. C, uh... Yeah, you're probably definitely going to need an item. You're definitely going to need to, like, use X items or something to get through the game. And D, completely impossible to beat the game on just level up moves. You allow TMs? Yeah, sure, you should be able to do it. But D is like, no, nah, not, no, nah, man, no, don't. Please don't. And I will be using each one of the Pokemon's final forms, assuming that you are evolving it throughout the entirety of the game. And who better to start off with than Venusaur? And reviewing his moveset here very quickly, it looks like... Uh, only on level up moves, your best setup is like... Razor Leaf, Growth, Sleep Powder, and Solar Beam, all of which are like the last few moves on the moveset. Which, other than, you know, Pokemon that res... This, your grass moves, it should be pretty much fine. Razor Leaf can cut through some resistances, and, you know, it can't be boosted by growth because of how Gen 1 works, but, hey, at least with growth, you're boosting your defense and your speed alongside that because of how Badge Boost Glitch works. And your only normal type move is Tackle, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, I would not suggest keeping that the whole game. You might want to keep Tackle maybe alongside Razor Leaf until you get Solar Beam, but that, that low attack, that 35, in like the 5% chance to miss, I wouldn't be surprised if you just got Vine Whip. And it's like, the more I think about it, the more it's like, no, it's... Yeah, Venusaur is going to struggle in very, very obvious parts of the game, you know? Kind of using another site alongside here, so I'm pretty much strictly limited to my loading speed. Uh, Charizard, I would say, would still be very, very possible. And remember, we're talking about yellow, and... We're talking about red, blue, yellow. Move sets between the games don't change a ton, from what I've been noticing. So, yeah, between red, blue, and yellow, you're going to have... Uh, you're going to have a time, essentially. With Charizard, let's see. I'm going to look over everything here. There's, and there are three moves that seem like absolutely mandatory for the end game. Well, two being Flamethrower and Slash, of course. Slash is one of those enhanced crit chance moves, and Flamethrower is big stab. You're going to have, like, 130 power or something like that. But you also get a partial trapping move in Fire Spin, which is, like, Instantly, instantly good. The fourth move is where I'm kind of debating a bit. Like, let's see, what what are your other options? Because no one would want to use Rage, ever. It, unless you're stuck with it, which 
is true with Kangaskhan, but we'll uh, get the Kangaskhan. Um. Yeah, I'd probably just say, uh, considering how Slash works, you might just want to make Growl your last move, as funny as that sounds. So it's gonna, like, Growl, Flamethrower, Slash, Fire Spin. That seems to be the best level up exclusive move set for Charizard, the more I think about it. It doesn't make a ton of sense, but I don't have any other ideas for how this could work. I mean, and the TM list is absolutely massive on Charizard, even so, so. Yeah, even then, I'd say A tier, you, get, you do have a bunch of options. The only problems come in, of course, when you're forced to run into Pokemon that resist fire moves. I still think you're going to have some struggle. Oh, excuse me. And to be honest, probably a lot less than Venusaur. At least a little bit less than Venusaur, especially with the trapping move, even though Fire Spin does miss. However, Blastoise, uh, okay, Blastoise, I love you, buddy, but, um, okay. Yeah, you're going to be using Bubble and or Water Gun, probably both throughout a lot of the game, until you get Hydro Pump at level 52, which doesn't come until near the end. Oh my god, man, but... Blastoise d does not deserve that kind of crap, but... Yeah, you actually have to consider the two-turn charge-up moves. Um, although, honestly, Blastoise might have slightly less struggle than Venusaur, I think? I mean, it, it is weak to a bunch less than Venusaur is, it's just... Again, last four moves, Bite, Withdraw, Skull Bash, Hydro Pump. Withdraw just to kind of, you know, use Badge Boost, Glitch, boost your normal defense so that you don't die. Skull Bash, it hits hard. I mean, yeah, sure, you're going to take a hit. Which, especially if you're doing no items on top of only level up moves, is going to be, like, terrible. But hey, Hydro Pump is okay, especially if you can find the PP ups to boost it up. And the 80% is shaky, but I haven't missed too much while using submissions, so all in all, it's fine. And yeah, bites. That's yeah, other than skull bash, that's like the best normal move possible. I don't think you'd want to keep bubble or water gun longer than you'd want to, especially bubble. Oh yeah, bite. Yeah, really low flint. And the flinch chance is not that great in Gen 1. I think it's better past that, but Especially considering it's normal instead of dark type. So, yeah, it's kind of Hydro Pump or Bust in most fights. But when you're fighting water types, especially in Lorelei's case, yeah, it's Bite and Skull Bash. Kind of the way to go. Even if you end up using a lot of Bite PP to take out the Cloister. But, oh uh, well. What are you going to do? Butterfree? Butterfree is just one of my favorite Pokemon in general for some reason. Okay, yeah, you are going to be stuck with... Now, in yellow, um, unless you start as a Metapod, I don't see why you would. You would have access to Harden. So in yellow's case, you start up with Caterpie, evolve it into Metapod, and then get Butterfree, you'll at least have some moves to use. But, uh, and there's really only a few moves that I think would really come in handy here. Like, yeah, level up only, side beam, pretty much mandatory. It's not psychic, but it's not like a super terrible move either, so you're still going to hurt some things. Sleep powder, instant saving grace, let me tell you right now. And it doesn't miss that often, you... Wish it would hit more often than it did, but hey, gotta deal with that sometimes. And in yellow only, besides Harden, it also gets Gust, of all things. Yep, you guys heard me, it gets Gust. And the level up... And the level ups on the powders are a little bit earlier than they are in red and blue, but... Hey, the sooner you get that sleep powder, the better off you'll be. And when it comes to, like, Psybeam, sleep powder, and... Okay, Gust, which is pretty unfortunate. Um, 
I suppose your last move could either be Confusion just to have extra Psychic PP damage, or you could maybe go Stun Spore. That sounds like a competitive only thing. And Supersonic sounds terrible. Um, well, I guess if you're yellow, you may as well. If you're playing in yellow version, you may as well keep Harden. You know, Sleep Powder, Harden, Gust, Psybeam, something like that. And red and blue, since you don't get Gust, you may just want to use uh, possibly Confusion as your last move if you're playing red, blue. Yellow Gust at least opens up some options, especially if you're fighting Sabrina. So we're going to drop Butterfree and C because, again, possible, but I still see a lot of struggle happening here. B drill though. I mean, yeah, with TMs it gets Swords Dancers is great. If you're leveling up, it only gets agility. And even in yellow version, it, Kakuna does not learn Harden from evolving. Which means until you get agility, you're pretty much stuck. It's like, let's see, like Poison Sting String Shot, you finally get Fury Attack. Focus energy is useless. Um, yeah, let's see how else this would go. The Twin Needle and Pin Missile with agility, and then your last move would have to... may just have to be Poison Sting. And that's, like, really, really bad. Yeah, I think Butterfree Beedra would have it far worse than Butterfree. Especially in the solo runs I have been doing. Butterfree got a way better time than Beedrill did. But that's just how the cookie crumbles. I mean, yeah, sure, agility does trigger a badge boost glitch, which is always awesome, but again, can't always rely on that. No, I think Pidgeot does have it slightly better. Emphasis on slightly. Yeah, quite literally, there's only one moveset I really see working on level up only for Pidgeot. Wing attack, agility, mirror moves, and attack. I mean, un unless you want to use quick attack over sand attack, which I think is at least somewhat viable. Definitely wouldn't want gust. And no matter what, you will have problems fighting rock types. And electric types. But hey, if for some reason you really want to do level up moves only, I, I, I think Pidgeot would have a slightly less annoying time than Butterfree. You know, the thing about Beedrill is it's, its moves are just bad. I mean, yeah, sure, there's a lot more coverage between Bug and Poison than normal flying. I, I would say especially, but... The moves are weak, and unless you actually teach Beedrill Swords Dance, you're kind of, you know, messed up, again. and then you'd, like, allow Double Edge and Beedrill can also pick up Mega Drain, which, all of that is fantastic. The way I'm seeing it, yeah, I'm putting Butterfree over Pidgeot because Butterfree at least gets Psychic moves, which is good throughout a fair portion of the game, and Butterfree can pretty much always cause confusion, or have a decent chance to, as long as it keeps spamming confusion and side beam the whole game. It, it, me, and, and mirror moves the closest thing you're going to get to Mimic. You may be able to copy, like, a good a good hitting attack, or, like, a good stat boost move, or... If Sleep Powder misses you, <laughs> somehow you might be able to bounce that Sleep Powder back... There's no way Pidgeot's doing it without a lot of leveling up, which is really unfortunate. <laughs> and I think we're about to get to our next impossible Pokemon after Pidgeot. Raticate. Yeah, there's only normal moves. Raticate cannot do level up only, so it's going there. But if you were doing it on, like, a team challenge, I don't think Raticate would be too bad. Focus Energy would still be useless. Super Fang, Hyper Fang, Quick Attack, Tail Whip might be the best thing you would get out of it. I mean, Tackle's Tackle. Quick Attack at least has priority. Hyper Fang can cause flinches. Super Fang cuts health in half. I think it would at least be a good teammate if you're, like, allowing teams. But if you're going solo, Raticate 
Cannot do it. Although Piro has a far better time. And that is easily because of Drill Peck. Although, again, looking at it, Drill Peck, Agility, Mirror Move, Fury Attack. Um, I'm not sure that puts it above Butterfree, but I still see Firo struggling. Yeah, Drill Peck's good. Agility is not bad for badge boosting move, especially since it guarantees you'll move first. If you do it enough times. And the more you agility, the more badge boost you get, which is fine. Mirror move, again, you might get lucky, copy a really strong attack, or, you know, a good status move, or at least some decently hard hitting normal move, maybe, but... And the only normal move Firo gets on level up is Fury Attack. Not the biggest fan of multi-hit moves, but hey, if you get the very rare lottery level chances of luck into crit, then yeah, you're set. Hmm, I'm starting to feel like I need to add another tier to this already. Well, there are Bach. Um I'm just say Arbok doesn't have a good level up moveset whatsoever. And like Charizard, Arbok does have a wrap as a traffic move, which I think you should keep for the whole game. Now, I would be inclined to put it here, but the bigger problem is uh, the ghost types you'll run into in, throughout the game. Because your only non normal moves are Poison Sting and Acid. Which Acid can lower defense, meaning, uh, yeah, hey. You know, I'm thinking about it. I think Bureau and Butterfree should be up here. But yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense for now. Yeah, Arbok just has it really bad. Because it should be at least possible. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to add it here uh, after all. Add real below. Um... I really should have thought of this before I came in here. Alright, we'll call it that. Alright, here's what we're going to do. Impossible tier will be F. I think our box should be there. Bureau and Butterfree should be about there. That That's where I think this is going to be. Yeah, Arbok, I don't see how you're doing, like, a solo version of Arbok without using, at, at the very least, X items. And you'd have to, like, max out on, on his attack to, like, get through Agatha and so many other ghost types. Like, as for a final moveset, like, Rap, Glare, yeah, Rap, Glare, Screech, Acid. I mean, yeah, Bite would be good throughout most of the game, especially... If you land Glare, you can, like, para flinch as well if you want to, like, preserve Rap PP, which is fine. And Glare is our box signature move. Screech will, uh, really help those attacks do more damage. So, yeah, you're definitely going to want to hit Agatha's Ghost with at least a few Screeches, but, you know, our box not having a good time at all. It'll take a while, but I think you would eventually be able to do it. Raichu, which I guess technically we can go into yellow with Pikachu. Yeah, Pikachu on just level up moves, evolving into Raichu in red and blue, which I guess I'll tier first since red and blue came first. If we're talking Raichu, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Thundershock. I'm seeing Thundershock, Swift, Agility, Thunder is, like, maybe the best level up combination, because Thundershock is at least consistent electric damage. Thunder's just when you want to land a big hit immediately, and then maybe Thundershock to kind of sprinkle in the finishing move after. Swift is stronger than Quick Attack. It never misses, even through Sand Attack, which, and Sand Attack just becomes free badge boost. Yeah. Like, an extra free badge boost to your attack, which lasts pretty much the entire game. 
thanks to Brock giving you the Boulder Badge first. So, yeah, immediately you, you've gotten something really good. So, sand attack is never a threat. Agility, again, just to boost up every single stat. I see Raichu... I see Raichu having an easier time than Pidgeot and Pedro, but maybe not Butterfree. <laughs> and when it comes to Pikachu, when it comes to like Pikachu and Yellow, yeah, you lose. You do lose out on Swift, which I always thought was crazy. But what Pikachu gets is Double Team and Thunderbolt via Level Up. And I would say. Yeah, I, I would also say to keep Slam, that move always seems to miss, but I'd rather have the oomph of that attack. And for Kit Thunder, you get Thunderbolt at that point. Agility for... Let's see. Yeah, double Team, Slam, Thunderbolt, Agility. Theoretically, level up all exclusive Pikachu should be okay. Um, but with how often Slam misses, I'll tentatively put Yellow Pikachu, like, right there. That's kind of a Pokemon all on its own. I played Yellow enough times to know that. Like, Pikachu got a massive fucking moveset buff in Yellow. And then Raichu would kind of be able to capitalize on that if you traded it back and then use the Thunderstone to trade back. So if you have access to trading with like red and blue to evolve it into Raichu to trade it back on yellow, that would probably be really helpful. Even if you lose the like friendship stuff, hey, it's fine. Really no reason to not do that, I guess. You know, just strictly speaking on stats alone. Sand Slash you would think would be good. And then I forgot that, um, I forgot the kind of move Sand Slash gets. What's dumb is that you would be forced to use Poison Sting to get through Agatha. And while it does get Sand Attack, which is good, um, I, I think it's slightly ahead of Arbok, because Sand Attack is a little bit more reliable than Glare, presumably. What'd you get? Uh, okay, you'd have you, you'd be forced to use Poison Sting. Sand Slash does not get any ground moves on level up in Gen 1 in general. Even in the yellow, which is stupid. Like Poison Sting, Sand Attack, and then you'd have to use Slash and Swift. Just to deal with like everything else that Poison Sting can't. I mean, you might be able to get some poison sometimes, but uh, Slash and Swift is the way to go. It, it essentially turns into, like, really weird Scyther at that point with Poison Chance. And I love Sand Slash, too. I don't think it deserves that. You know, when it comes to stone evolutions for, like, Nidor... For, for the Nidos? Nidor Arena? Okay. I mean, you... You'd be thinking, oh, evolve it into the Nidoqueen Queen before level 23 so it can learn Body Slam? No. You don't want to do that. At, at, at least I wouldn't think you'd want to do that. The only reason I'm saying that is because... Well, one, if you're doing it in... Uh, if you're doing it in red-blue, I'd have to say, yeah, you might want to... Pick up double kick so you at least have rock coverage before you evolve into Nidoqueen, Queen, but that's so, so far down the line. It's like, what are you gonna do until then? It's like, it's so late. Like, double kick in red and blue is so late that you'd have to use Body Slam. That you have to completely ignore Body Slam as a move. And double kick is probably the best multi hit move in Gen 1. It's fun, funny as that sounds. You'd have to have Poison Sting to hit Agatha and the other ghosts, which is also pretty dumb. 
But that is not a problem in yellow version. Which, you can learn Double Kick and Poison Sting before you evolve it. So, also waiting until you're level 36 just to learn Bite feels kind of dumb. It's kind of like, okay, what do you do then? Uh, I guess the moveset in general, regardless of version, would have to be something like uh, Tail Whip. Maybe Body... Yeah, yeah, Tail Whip, Body Slam. Yeah, Tail Whip, Body Slam, Double Kick, Poison Sting. Which I know sounds sucky. But I still think Nido Queen would have a little bit easier time than Arbok. Nido King also has a similar problem. Scrolling through his list takes a while. Anyway. Nido King. Oh my god. Okay. Why would it... No. Yeah, in red and blue, you... You can probably get away with ignoring double kick. Because thrash is just really good. And, you know, you get the stronger Pokemon sooner, and then you can, like, start hitting things hard-ish. Considering what you're fighting is rock, and rock resists normal a lot. You know, I'm thinking about this. Yeah, you'd be kind of kind of screwed sometimes. And yellow is just like, okay. However, you also have the option, if you're allowing items, to use horn drill. But you'd have to go to level 41 on red blue, and then evolve it into Nido King, or because you know. You're not using TMs, right? But you have a horn drill TM. Yeah. Yeah, horn drill does exist as a TM, but you know, level up moves alone. Uh, I mean, unless you want to amend the rules to say, oh, then if this Pokemon learns it as a level up move, I can just use a TM. Not every TM is a level up move. You I could see you allowing that as an exemption, but no. It's not how I'm seeing this. At least if you're doing it 100% honestly or something like that. Yellow, you'd have it worse by waiting to level 46, but in both cases, you'd have to dodge Thrash. Which, okay, if, if you are allowing items just to let Horn Drill hit, then Nido King would be somewhere... Yeah, it's like, yeah, but you can't horn drill ghosts. Yeah, you'd be able to do that to her Golbat and Arbok, but then... Okay, I'll uh, give Nido King a little bit of a grace here and say bottom of C because horn drills are just kind of... Especially with X speed and X accuracy on top of that. But... And you get, like, thrash and... So assuming you are allowing TMs to be used, then like Double Kick, Poison Sting, Horn Drill. Double Kick, Poison Sting, Horn Drill, Thrash, maybe? That'd be kind of nice. Well, if that's the case, you're going to put it like maybe there if you're allowing items. But otherwise, it'd be like maybe top of above Sand Slash. I just don't see it being better than Raichu, for, for some dumb reason. Then we're going to have to go to Clefable, which all the level up moves will come from Clefairy, so we're probably looking at that page. It's like, oh, oh okay, Metronome is a thing, but how often are we going to get good luck on Metronome, you know? That's why I'm putting it below Arbok. Arbok at least is like some guaranteed measures to use on Agatha. Because of Screech, I don't want to put Arbok above Middle Queen now, anyway. Yeah, Clefable, ugh. Yeah, you may get some moves 
to hit Agatha and her ghost, but the way I'm seeing it, no. It'd be like... they actually say, uh, Club Fable's best moveset would be something like Defense Curl, Light Screen... No. Minimize Metronome, Light Screen... Fucking Pound. You might be able to get away with Double Slap, but... I feel like Pound is a lot more consistent. Assuming you're starting from Clefairy and evolving it. Otherwise, you'd be, uh, stuck with Minimize, Double Slap, Metronome, Growl, I think it was? Let me see. What was it again? Yeah, Sing, Double Slap, Minimize, Metronome. I almost got it. Which, yeah, Sing doesn't do sleep. I guess I can replace light screen for Sing then. Yeah, minimize Sing, metronome, pound. That's probably your best overall moveset at that point. The way I'm seeing it. Yeah, Club people can do a few things. But if we're talking nine tails, I think you're a little bit better off. The only one. I think there's really only one moveset that would work for Ninetales. Flamethrower, Fire, Spin, Confuse, or a Quick Attack. Wow, the fact that pretty much every Fire type would... Yeah. Partial Trapping move, really strong Elemental move. Ninetales just got it. I mean, not good enough to be S, and I still think Slash over Quick Attack is better. I think if your is also, like, not not bad, it, it's decent. I don't think that requires much, however, um, yeah, we get to Wigglytuff. Which I think would, which if it wasn't for the like, if, if Wigglytuff got Metronome like a Fable, maybe. But I would still say that Wigglytuff would be, like, an overall better team member than Eradicate in that kind of situation. You get, like, Defense Curl, Rest. I can't believe I'm advocating Rest. I usually don't. But like, Defense Curl, Rest, Body Slam... Sing, I guess? Yeah, Defense Curl, Rest, Body Slam, Sing. Like this really good, bulky sleep setter. If you were, like, doing a team run that way, I think Wigglytuff would actually be far better than Clefable. Plus, it has a massive HP pool. It's really going to live, like, a lot of stuff. Yes, I played with a Wigglytuff. Yeah, it doesn't always hit that hard, but... Dang, that thing will hit like a truck. And I like that about it. When it comes to Zubat and Galbat, there is one thing I do need to kind of mention. Like, if you catch it starting as a Zubat, you are going to be missing out on a move. I'm starting to realize would actually be kind of required... But if you catch a wild Golbat, yeah, you catch a wild Golbat, maybe, you could have the chance to have Screech. It's like, let's Screech in the starting was for Golbat, but not Zubat. So, assuming you can somehow get a Golbat early enough to learn Screech, or you actually pack it in at the start as a Golbat, Maybe? Yeah, you could have Screech as part of your moveset and have, like, Screech, Bite, Confuse Ray, and Wing Attack. Actually doesn't sound that bad. Yeah, go back and go like about there. Screech and Confuse Ray can combo together. You'd have Bite and Wing Attack to also capitalize on the lower defense. But if you're... Starting from Zubat, you wouldn't get Screech. Um, maybe. 
behaves would... Like, here he gets... I don't see why you need to use supersonic at that point. That that doesn't make any sense to me. And wing attack is just kind of a weak move in Gen 1 regardless. Uh, Leech Life is not good psychic type coverage, I can tell you that. I don't know. But, yeah, saying you're starting off as Galbat and using Screech, I'd say, yeah, best case scenario, probably B tier. In which case, it's just fine. Uh, audit. But, you know, going to Bioplume, what we'd have is uh, quite a bit of a struggle here. Yeah, Petal Dance, Solar Beam, Sleep Powder, Acid. It's not like when you go into Bioplume, you actually get a ton more. It, no, you really don't. You honestly do not. Yeah, Acid, Sleep Powder, Petal Dance, Solar Beam. That's... It's not bad. Hell, I almost want to put it here, actually. Yeah, I... You know, the more I review it, the more I think that makes sense. Sleep Powder gives you time to charge for Solar Beam. Petal Dance is just strong, acid, can lower defense, which is fine. And Sleep Powder is just good, so I think Vile Plume would be one of your better options on a level up moves only kind of tier list challenge, whatever you're trying to do with it. Which is just fine, but you have to keep it as a gloom until level 52. But by the time you get it to be a Vile Plume, it'd be great. If you're fine with grinding, then yeah, but if you're not, it's like, oh, I don't know, man. Probably about there. Best case scenario is probably... Nah. It's probably above Venus, or at least in this one case. Venus is my favorite grass type in this game. Uh, gonna have to do Parasects. Actually, this is one of the times I'm going to have to advocate for Leech Life being a coverage move. Spore just puts everything to sleep immediately, so why would you not? Growth, uh, yeah, badge boosts all your stats. Maybe make Leech Life do kind of noticeable damage to things. And you'd be able to resist Agatha's Dream Eaters a lot better. This last just crits everything. Although with Parasect's low speed, that might not always be the case, so, uh, at least it's still stronger than Scratch, I'd say... No. I'd say maybe there for Parasect. Like, I can see it, you know, doing an okay job, but... It, it, yeah, most of the time, no. Now, Venomoth actually did get a... Pretty sizable buff when transitioning to yellow. It will learn confusion as a venonat. And that is fantastic. Otherwise, yeah, Psychic, Psybeam. Psychic, Psybeam, Sleep Powder, Leech Life. I actually thought of a few of these before I did this video. Um, yeah, Venomoth would be coming around... Well, at the very least, better than Butterfree. Uh, probably. I think Venomoth would be about A tier, actually. Maybe not as well off as Ninetales and Charizard, but... You can lower special, you can confuse them, you can put them to sleep, and Leech Life is something. I mean, unless you really want to keep Tackle, but... Well, Tackle would hit a bit more than Leech Life, so... Maybe you can get away with Tackle. Leech Life slash Tackle, let's say that. Uh, man, this is one of the weirdest ideas I've ever had. What about Doug Trio? 
Doug Trio, not that good in solo runs, sure, but it's also the only Pokemon to naturally learn Dig. And that is great. Pretty easy moves that here too. Earthquake slash dig sand attack. That is awesome. I think the trio is going to be the first S tier just based on that combination alone. Yeah, sure, it's hard to fight flying types, but hey, most of the game is not going to be too hard other than trying to hit flying types and I guess water types. <laughs> Cloister kind of walls ya. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking about Cloister. Uh... Yeah, probably there. I think that makes a bit more sense. But it's still really dang good. Persian. Um, I don't think Persian has any non-normal moves. That it might be a level up, kind of think about it. Oh, yeah. Although... Yeah, Slash, Screech. Slash, Screech, Bite, Payday? I would still say better than Eradicate, but I just see a lot more constructive stuff coming from Wigglytuff if you're going to like do a team version. Yeah, F. If you wanted to consider using them, you would need to do a team version, essentially. But a slash screech. I mean, heck, you might, even, you might even be able to go all offense and replace screech with bite. No, slash fury swipes bite payday. Sounds a little bit odd. I don't know. It just internally feels off to me, I guess. But hey, guaranteed slashes every single time you use it, you're going to be doing a boatload of damage. Like, S, I feel like they'd have to have absolutely no struggles to be an S tier. And while, like, A, yeah, pretty dang good move set overall, but might still have a struggle or two, yeah. That's how I see that working. Um, Persian being an F, I think really tough would be overall better, because then, you know, Body Slam delivers paralysis. Probably help a bit more in the long run, but who cares? Uh, Golduck... Okay, yeah, we're... Okay. Oh! Actually, it's not, a, it's not as big a problem as I thought with Golduck. Okay. You would not get any stab moves until level 59 with Hydro Pump, but, uh, hey, with Confusion, it's at least doable. And I probably put a Golduck here. Yeah, honestly, uh, yeah, Hydro Pump, Confusion, Fury Swipes, Tail Whip, I guess? Tail Whip only augments Fury Swipes, I know, but... <laughs> what else can you do? I mean, Hydro Pump's a fine move. Confusion is okay, at least most of the time, and... That Tail Whip... I don't know. Like, two of the moves are like, bam, bam, they're obvious. You need to have them. But before you have them, Psyduck's kind of, eh. Then you evolve into Golduck, and you you learn moves a little bit later, and it's kind of annoying at that point. It's like they expect you to use a TM or Surf on this thing. Which, I know this was Game Freak's first try, but jeez, dude. Come on, you can do better than that, can't you? And I think Prime Ape is going to be another one of those impossibles. Like, M F is impossible to solo run, but can, but should work on a team still. Oh, Prime Ape is technically possible. It gets Seismic Toss via level up. Like, Thrash, Seismic Toss. Yeah, Thrash, Seismic Toss, Karate Chop, Fury Swipes. I'd say, uh... Yeah, I'd, I'd say throw Prime Ape in about B. I think that's... Uh, that is a fair spot for it. Although if you were doing it in yellow, it would, it would learn Low Kick. 
So yeah, just uh, replace Fury Swipes for Low Kick in that case, then. If you're doing any yellows, like Low Kick, Seismic Toss, Thrash, Karate Chop, that, that, that sounds okay. Probably one of the better combinations of moves you can get. Be really good. Or at least pretty good. Arcanine, um... Jeez. Remember, this is all level up moves only. But then I have to go back to Growlithe because it learns Flame Door level 50. But then after that, the rest of its moves are not that great. Oh, wait. Um, okay, here we go. Be like Flamethrower, Agility. Yeah, Flamethrower, Agility, Takedown, Leer is what I'm seeing as Arcanine's best combination of moves, which. Yeah, badge boosting's good. Takedown does have recoil, though, and it does miss. Maybe Arcanine would have it a teeny bit better off than Primate, but not by much. Remember, this is all just speculation. This list is entirely based on speculation, not, not testing. And I, yeah, I don't even know what else to say here about Arcanine. Polyrath, do okay. Polyrath will not be having any concerns, especially going back to like Poliwag, Poliwhirl. Oh yeah, like Body Slam, Amnesia, Hydro Pump, Hypnosis. Oh my gosh, Primate and yeah, Polyrath would actually probably be the first S tier. Just based on that alone. Now it's going to be hard to get Hydro Pump to hit Agatha's Ghosts. I, I will say that. You may want to use Amnesia and Hypnosis to buy yourself some time. And Body Slam is a decently strong move when, when, <laughs> when you can actually pick it up. And Body Slam is a TM, so if you just want to teach that, then okay. Yeah, sure. Do it. You know, use that TM just to have access to the level up move sooner. Sure, whatever. I could see that as a viable, like, side rule. And that would make Polyrath great. I already know Alakazam's going to be good for this. Don't know why I'm bothering scrolling through everything. Alakazam? Yeah, Recover Psychic Reflect Psybeam. Alakazam, um, the only problems you're going to have are fighting the other Alakazams in the game. I'm almost inclined to say Alakazam would be, like, even above Polyrath. And get Recover to heal yourself, which, if you're doing no items, is a godsend. Oh my god. That's going to be crazy. Or if you're, like, catching it along the way, Kinesis may be an okay move in the meantime. It looks like, say, catch a cadaver and then trade evolve it into Alakazam or something. Yeah, sure, that could work. The champ, I do see, is doable. As long as you have Seismic Toss, you can at least hurt ghosts in Gen 1. Let's see, when do I see this moveset becoming? Uh... Okay. I think you could get away with Seismic Toss... Low kick, karate chop, some. Seismic toss, low kick, karate chop, submission seems to be fine for my champ. Although I wouldn't say S for my champ, which is. It's just slow. Oh, yeah. Mm -mm. No, I. Uh, yeah, probably about there. Maybe. Again, all of this is speculation, but with that moveset, I don't see anything besides Agatha being too big a concern. You just hit hard, and then you go to the next fight. And that is just fine. Now we're going to Victory Bell. And I guess Weeping Bell. But you can buy the stones in the mart, so you don't have to go looking for them like you do in other games. Fine. Yeah, you only really need, like, 
What I see working here is like a razor leaf. Yeah, razor leaf for sure. Wrap. Huh. Actually, Victory Bell does have a bunch of options here. Like, there's a growth for badge boosting. Like, a Sleep Powder Growth Wrap Razor Leaf, I think, would be the overall best options. I like to put Victory Bell in the lake. It, just because of the trapping move, you're... No. You might have some trouble trying to set up. That's really the only thing that's preventing Victory Bell from going above into S. Like, these two just got it going on. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's quite that, but it's like nearly that, and that feels fine. Yeah, Tentacruel. Tentacruel, Tentacruel, Tentacruel. I love Tentacruel. Okay. Might want to keep acid. Um, like, I just need this being acid barrier screech hydro pump if you were doing level up moves only. Or maybe acid wrap screech hydro pump. That way you still have access to the trapping move. I think we'll still make it better than Blastoise. Yeah, you can set up a little quicker. You don't get as many badge boosts, but hey, it's... Screech kind of can offset that a little bit. Yeah, Acid? Tentacruel's kind of having this more than four move syndrome thing that Victory Bell has started to have. That's, like, actually good. Get wrap. Wrap. Screech. Acid hydro pump, I think. Yeah, that's probably the best. Wrap, screech, acid hydro pump. I do see that working. Yeah, some of these moves are weak, but that's supposed to be what TMs are for. You know what I mean? But this is no TMs. This is only level up moves. How good I think Pokemon would be with only their level up moves. Uh, Golem slash Graveler. Um, and the first Pokemon was Self Destructor Explosion to talk about. Okay. Here's what I'm thinking Defense Curl or Harden, depending on which one you like best. Rock Throw, even though 65% accuracy sucks. Harden because. Uh, yeah, I'll just say the well, earthquake because a doy, rock throw because kind of need it, I guess. Either defense curl or harden, and then if you're using it as part of a team explosion, if you're trying to solo run with only TMs, uh, if you're trying to solo run without TMs, then tackle. You shouldn't be blowing yourself up. Golem can actually do pretty well on. Golem can actually do pretty well without TMs. Um, the only reason I'm putting it below Doug Trio is that Doug Trio gets both Dig and Earthquake, or is Golem only only gets Earthquake, so you can't dodge Water and Grass moves very easily. <laughs> I mean, even by the time you get the Volcano Badge for the Special Boost, you're probably not getting much extra resistance. <laughs> Especially when you get Razor Leaf tossed at you from Venusaur or something. Eesh. My man. Whew. Anyway. Yeah, like I said, Earthquake, Rock Throw, Harden slash Defense Curl, and then Explosion slash Tackle. Which is, I know sounds stupid, but hey. You don't get much else to do. You are restricting yourself on purpose at that point. Rapid Dash, okay. 
this one's not going to be that great. Like, agility, like, agility, fire spin, takedown, stomp, I guess. Stomp with flinch and takedown when you need the actual power, which I would still say. I feel like Rapid Ash and Ark and I would be around the same point. But you get both Stomp and Takedown, which means you do not need to take a recoil to do normal damage, unless you want to keep Bite with Arcanine, but the 60 is kind of my lower limit on base power for most of the, like, pretty end game, you know? Yep. Agility, Fire Spin, Takedown, Stomp. I guess you could include Tail Whip or Growl if you really wanted to, but I don't really see the uh, bonus in that, I guess. I suppose you could say. <laughs> so far, I'm satisfied. Uh, slow Bro. This is an S. Um, I feel like Slow Bro will just be S on level up alone. Oh, yeah. And quite honestly, Psychic Amnesia. And Psychic Amnesia withdraw Water Gun. Yeah, you don't get a Hydro Pump, but... Uh... And putting Slowbro here specifically for lack of Hydro Pump and lack of other, like, sleep-inducing moves. But hey, with Amnesia and Withdraw, you'll be able to take everything pretty dang well. You'll be, like, impossible to destroy. You just need to use potions in between fights, or the heck, use potions in the fight, even. That'd still be nice, you know? <laughs> Slowbro would at least be there. When I'm going through this more, I'm like, you know, this is kind of fun to think about, even if I don't immediately have ways to quantify how good everything is. Magneton! Okay. Okay, this seems pretty obvious. Like, Swift, Screech, Thunder Wave, Thunder Shock. Yeah, you don't get Thunder, but hey, at least you get an electric move, even if it is weak. And with Screech and Swift, you'd have some way to do okay physical damage. Thunder Wave is good for paralysis. I don't know, I don't wonder even that's overestimating it a little bit. Um, but yeah, Screech does require a fair bit of setup. We'll drop Magneton there, I think. Yeah, I think Gold Duck and Parasect could overall be a little bit better. A tiny bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to order them according to how good of a time I think they would have. And the only reason Pikachu from yellow is in C and not like S despite the fact that it's Thunderbolt, is because its stats are ick. <laughs> Pikachu's my favorite Pokemon, don't get me wrong, but I acknowledge how bad its stats are. Oh my god. I'm not that rose-tinted. Going into Farfetch, um... Swords Dance Agility Slash Peck. Straight up... No other moveset that I think would really help it. Still have an easier time than, like... I also probably have a slightly easier time than it, okay? Swords Dance boost your peck instead of just trying to poison sting ghosts, and... I think that's what helps Farfetch get a slight edge over Nato King in this scenario. Yeah, I, I kind of see it working out that way. Dodrio should be pretty interesting, though. I used to know these movesets by heart as a kid. Now I have to look them back up. Yeah, Drill Peck, Try Attack, Agility, Fury Attack. That was my first immediate thought. And Try Attack in Gen 1 cannot... 
cause any status, but hey, it's still strong. Security attack is better than like trying to rely on growl. I think Dodrio should at least get the spot above Firo. You're not trying to rely on mirror move. You have a genuine other normal move. And Fury attack, uh, I don't know, just to help finish things off without wasting dry attack BP, I guess. Like, why use regular pack when you can use drill pack? <laughs> Farfetch does not get that luxury, but hey. <laughs> it's what you need to do to survive as a Farfetch'd in this world, I guess. When it comes to Dugong, I think you're going to have a far better time. Maybe not. Okay, yeah. Ice Beam. I guess I could do Ice Beam. Rest. Headbutt Aurora Beam. Even though Dugong's not really that quick. But do you just want to do like Ice Beam, Aurora Beam, Rest, Takedown? Like a takedown slash headbutt, you can use either one, I think. And it starts off with headbutt. You can still hit a fair bit of things. Yeah, I don't think it'd be any better than Venusaur. Although maybe you might want to do that. Yeah, yeah, rest, not the best recovery move, but hey... What you gonna do? And there aren't as many Pokemon that are stuck with just normal or fighting moves that can't hit ghosts as I thought. There's only three so far it'd be impossible with, although I'm sure we're gonna come up on something else that'll be, like, really annoying. Now, going on to Muck. Be like, okay, Screech, Acid, Armor... Yeah, Screech, Acid Armor, Sludge, Minimize. I think that would be Muck's best set on just level up. Which Minimize would immediately buff its chances a lot. Screech would help Sludge do more damage. Acid Armor would make it harder to kill its physical moves, even if special moves would still kind of show him he's not the hot shit. Even though he is a pile of shit. But hey, having the evasive boost is something neat. Uh, no, probably about there. Maybe I'm overestimating how good Minimize is. But hey, screeching the ghost and then hitting them with Sludge should do fucking something. May not need to use the X items at that point just to get okay damage. That's kind of my point with that. Cloister should be... Also pretty easy to rank. Like scrolling through this other list I have with me here. Um Now I gotta go back to shelter. Anyway, shelter. Okay, you kinda need to have clamp, I'd say, ice beam. Hmm. Maybe Clamp, Ice Beam, Spike, Cannon, Leer would work. Yeah, actually using Cloisters. No, it's not technically a signature move, but... Due to Cloisters, better defenses. And the fact that has Clamp... Maybe here? No. no. A little bit more useful throughout most of the game than Fire types. Well, you might even want to keep withdraw and just drop Leer all together. Yeah, withdraw, spike cannon, clamp, ice beam. That, that's not terrible. Yeah, yeah, that's not terrible at all. I think Cloyster could totally handle that. I don't even need to look up Gengar. Confuse right hypnosis, nightshade, dream eater. That's what you'd want to go with for Gengar if you were doing level up only. And be because Hyp Dream Eater needs Hypnosis to hit. 
again, not quite S tier, but hypnosis does not hit as much as as often as like C Patter does. Venomoth doesn't need that kind of setup. I think I can comfort comfortably say A for that. Diffuser can help you set up hypnosis too, so it's something. Plus, you're using a lick throughout most of the game until you can pick up Dream Eater, although... No, not most of the game, some of the game. Gengar levels up kind of quick. I do remember that. Now, Onyx. Okay. How are we going to talk about Onyx here? Rock Throw, Slam, Harden, Bind. Easily would be its best possible moveset, and even then... Because Rock Throw is so bad... Slam misses a lot, too, and... Yeah, all of its moves have, like, a decently high chance to miss. I'm just putting... I'm actually saying probably below Beedrill. Actually, probably above Pidgeot and Beedrill in that regard, but... Yeah, at least it has moves that can, like, do some things, but it's still not very good in that... You just level up moves that alone. Onyx has bad stats and bad level up moves. Hypno should be far better, though. And immediately confirming that. I guess Psychic Headbutt. Yeah, psychic Headbutt Meditate Hypnosis would be the best just level up moves that list for Hypno. Psychic Headbutt Meditate. Hypnosis, I keep forgetting. Yeah, I don't foresee... Uh, maybe better than Venomoth, but I don't think better than Golem. Even though Tackle is pathetic. Either way, not bad. Kingler. I mean, sometimes it's hard. Other times it's not. Okay, well, Crab Hammer and Stomp for sure. And probably Harden. Actually, no, I think I already figured it out. Vice Grip, Stomp, Crab Hammer, Harden is what you'd want for Kingler on level up moves alone. Which Crab Hammer does crit more than other moves do, which is near guaranteed in most cases. Yeah, which in Kingler's case would be a guaranteed credit. Speed is actually good enough to do that. I think. Yeah, Vice Grip is just a normal damaging move. Stomp would would have the chance to flinch, which it might not always be able to take advantage of, but it is stronger than Vice Grip at the very least. And Harden just for badge boosting? Ah. Uh... Probably top of B above Tentacruel as well. Crab Hammer, the Crab Hammer is a teeny bit more accurate than Hydro Bump. Which is still good. Electrode, um, okay, I think I, I think Electrode's gonna be another one of the Pokemon that cannot beat the game by itself on level up moves alone. And that is indeed the case. Sorry, pal. Even then, what are you gonna... Use it for Swift, Explosion, Light Screen, Screech? Maybe Sonic Boom? No. Uh, no. I think Electrode is at least a little bit better than Eradicate, because then you could at least explode. Like explosion slash Sonic Boom, and Sonic Boom can't even hit ghost types. Which I feel like Explosion would be far more helpful than Sonic Boom if you're running it on a team. Yeah, you know, Swift won't be able to do like barely any damage. Light Screen does kind of protect it from special attacks though, so that could help out. Maybe, but I just don't see that really working. I'm sorry about that, guys. Now, Exeggutor, um, 
here's the thing, you'd want it to have at least one grass move, right? And the only grass move it would get via level up is from Execute with Solar Beam. And you'd skip Stomp entirely, which means you're kind of forced to keep Barrage as like a second attack move, so... Solar Beam, Barrage, Sleep Powder, Leech Seed, maybe? It's not that good, but... Honestly, I mean, if you're, I mean, if you're okay with using the Solar Beam TM and still leveling up to learn Stomp in the meantime, maybe. Um, um, assuming you're okay with using the TM moves that are still level up moves, then I guess Solar Beam, Stomp, Hypnosis slash Sleep Powder, depending on what you're doing, and Leech Seed would kind of be your best choices. And I still see Magneton being a little bit better, just overall, and in Parasite, you don't need to deal with that. Although then again, Rock and Ground type persistence. that seems to happen everywhere in these games. Oh well. Yeah, Barowak, um, whether or not you're in red, blue, or yellow really doesn't matter that much. I'm not sure it's a slight move set order between the two games. It doesn't matter quite that much. Let's see. What I could see you doing for Marowak would be like Boomerang, Thrash, Leer, Growl. Because there's no way you're using Rage if you know what you're doing. Yeah, Boomerang, Thrash, Leer, and Growl. That sounds pretty terrible, but. At least Marowak is like pretty good at. Okay, not pretty good. Semi good attack. Yeah, reviewing all the stats, I was like, because I remembered Marowak actually doing pretty well when I was doing my solo run with it. It, it was neat, but I was also allowing all my TMs, so it cut those out. Marowak just seems, oh, you know. But if you're doing it in yellow, you're missing. You're kind of missing out on it a little bit. Although, in yellow, you do get headbutt. So, I don't know. Yellow, you could do, like, thrash, boomerang, headbutt, tail whip, slash, leer, depending on which one you like better. Uh, because of yellow, I'm kind of inclined to put it a little bit higher in, say, just below Farfetch, but a little bit better than Nitto King. That's something, Ed. Because <laughs> at least Marowak still gets ground stab, you know? Well, I think Hitmonlee on level up moves is, like, pretty much impossible. If I remember right. Yep, does not get Seismic Toss via level up. But, you could do a move set of, like, all of his really good kicking moves and say, like, Rolling kick, jump kick, high jump kick, mega kick, and just like, you know, just kick everything. He's like, you know, just this really strong high attack guy, which I think would put him at the top of F. Which sounds pretty okay. Now, Hitmonchan, um. Yeah, on level up moves alone, I would also just say go for every one of his punch moves. And give it all the calciums you can. Maybe slap on the X special. Like, use X specials. And, like, Hitmonchan can go up to maybe... Maybe here? I mean, Mega Punch just hits hard. Ice Punch, Fire Punch, and Thunder Punch would... All unified together would be decent coverage. But that is quite a that is quite a resource investment. That's the only reason it's not going any higher than that. Just realistically, I can't see it doing any better. 
And I believe that Katong would also be impossible to work with. Probably even just to try to get it on a team. Oh yeah, Lickitung's only a post-game Pokemon in yellow, especially. I mean, you can technically use it in red and blue, but... Yeah, you're not getting much here. I mean, like, wrap. You know, like, wrap, stomp, defense, curl, screech. At best. Yeah, yeah, Lickitung... Nah. Mm. I'd even say you get a little bit more use out of Electrode at that point. I should... Actually, yeah, probably there. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Yeah, let's look at tongue for you. Wheezing, I can already tell you for sure. Um, a little bit better off on a team than going solo. Wheezing solo is not very... <laughs> not that fun. Not that fun. I thought it would be a little bit more fun, but it really wasn't. Wheezing's one of those things I like that I also acknowledge sucks. Like, I don't know how else you're doing this. You're like... Going maybe tackle, smoke screen, sludge, explosion. Haze just in haze is just not useful in general. It's only useful if a computer uses it, and even then, if they like hit you with confusion or some other status and they use haze, they'll get rid of it. So yeah, there's even caveats for the AI to use it. Yeah, tackle, Sludge, Smoke, Screen, Explosion. That's like the only viable moves that I think you can have on a Weezing. And... But at, at, at least you can choose the moves. I mean, actually, being on a team, I think, and be okay with Explosion, I think you could at least move it up the top of D, but... Yeah, it's not doing much better than that. Rhydon, I think, is another one that, through level up moves alone, just sucks. And moving on to look at it, uh, yeah, only normal moves. Or Fury Attack, Horn Drill. No, no, not Fury Attack. Like Stomp, Tail Whip, Slash, Leer, Horn Drill, Takedown, as I think. The best you get out of Rhydon. I mean, massive attack. But because it can't hit anything super effectively, whereas Hitmonlee can at least hit normal types and like rock types super effectively. I mean, Rhydon does have overall better stats than Wigglytuff, though, so there you go. I mean, it, it is a physical tank. It would hit pretty okay damage on Stomp and Takedown, most likely. It's it's something. Now, I know Chansey's going enough tier as well. The only question is, how bad are we talking for Chansey? Alright. Oh, here's how bad we're looking. Um, Yeah, Sing and Minimize for sure. Sing, Minimize, Double Edge... Growl. I think that's the best you can get with Chansey. Yeah, yeah Chansey's like support mon to the nth degree. It's not like getting anything done by itself. And with the really, really weak physical attack stat, I... Yeah. Raticate. I think Raticate would be overall more useful. I mean, plus Sing would miss almost all the time. Alright, Chansey. You're just not that good. I mean, if you're in yellow, though, you could replace Growl with Tail Whip. It'd probably be a little bit more helpful. At least I view lowering the opponent's defense as a little bit more useful than uh, lowering their attack. Like, good Statmon, maybe? But that's the most I can see working out of it. 
I'm sorry, Jancy. Tangela. Yeah, honestly, sleep powders. Yeah, sleep powder slam growth absorb. That's the only thing that would work. And yellow, the only difference is it would be vine whip instead of absorb. And um or Tangela probably would at least be a bit better than Onyx, but that's the most I'm willing to give it. And I am already sure Kangaskhan would be utterly terrible at this. And yeah, TMs only Kangaskhan can't do junk. Well yeah, but with Mega Punch, Dizzy Punch. Mega Punch, Dizzy Punch, Bite, Tail Whip. I think you could at least get a very good attacking Mon, which at least normal type stab would put it above Rhydon. Even though Rhydon's physical attack is, I think, much higher than Kangaskhan's. And probably, def yeah, defense as well. The only thing Kangaskhan really has above Rhydon is speed. Depends on how you feel about tankiness or speediness. Which one you value? Which one you would value a little bit more? But yeah, Kangaskhan. No, you could only use it on a team in that case. You know, it kind of be a little support, dude. Support, mama. Which is a, which is fine. Cedra, okay. Moving on to Cedra. Level up moves alone. We got. Smoke screen, water gun, agility, hydro pump. There's really no other way to go with it. At least you have 100% accurate water move, and you get a hydro pump. But I feel like Cedra is like, yeah, Cedra is like maybe bottom of B, top of C. I still like, I still feel like Primeape would be far better. <laughs> yeah, agility with badge boost. You get smoke screen. Wait. Okay, maybe up to here, but not better than Galbat because of Screech Confuse Race Energy, if you can manage to get that. Which, I don't know how you're setting up your games. People have been hacking in higher level Pokemon or higher form Pokemon as well. So, you know, that's an option in Galbat's case, at the very least. Which is fine. Now, Sea King. Fuck yeah, Sea King. I don't know who's ever said that. Let's see, Waterfall, Agility, Horn Drill, Peck. Yeah, Sea King actually learns Horn Drill normally. Sea King would actually, I don't think would be too terrible. However, I don't see it. You know, just slap an X accuracy on it after using Agility and, uh... Wait, actually, when you put it that way, hold on. I think it might be better than I thought. But overall, probably not better than Slowbro or Victory Bell, and I think I could be overestimating that. <laughs> Especially with Peck being its, like, one coverage move. Which, that's a massive weakness on level up only. Yeah, Waterfall, Horn Drill, Agility, Peck, who would... Realistically, you're not going for just that. Starmie, um, I think has the potential to be extremely annoying with, like, re minimize, recover, swift, and hydro pump. <laughs> Man, yeah, you're losing out on all the good TMs, but even on just level up, Starmie has at least some noticeably good stuff. Yeah, but with how much Hydro Pump can miss, at least you get the constant hits from Swift on on the physical side. Starmie... No, wait, that's Staryu stats. Um, yeah, but with the ability to heal... Yeah, you'll eventually get enough time to hit that Hydro Pump. Might take a while, but you'll eventually hit it. Star... Starmie. Same exact name in, in Japanese as well. Fun fact for you, if you care enough about that. Mr. Mime. Hmm, let's see. I guess Meditate Substitute. No. 
Barrier Substitute Confusion Double Slap, which, oh my god, Mr. Mime doesn't even get Psychic naturally. I do think that's bad. Uh, maybe slightly above Butterfree because it at least gets Stab on the Confusion, which should be stronger than Zybeam, but Butterfree also gets Sleep Powder at the same time, so yeah. Pretty easy to figure out. Now, I know Scyther is... Yeah. You're getting Quick Attack, Slash, Swords, Dance, a double team. Quick Attack, Slash, Swords, Dance, double team if you're red-blue. If you're yellow, just replace Quick Attack with Wing Attack. Swords, Dance, double team, Wing Attack, Slash. Which, if you're on yellow, may actually make it pretty dang possible. Yeah, if you're playing yellow Scyther level up moves only, yeah, Scyther should be pretty possible. Maybe not more so than. Maybe. But you are relying on double team and sword stance with wing attack. Oh, yeah, you can do it. This might take a few tries. Again, which is fine. Jinx, um. Okay, Lovely Kiss, Blizzard. Yeah, Lovely Kiss, Blizzard, Ice Punch, Body Slam. That seems like the most immediate, really good move selection. Um, yeah, probably there. I mean, Jinx is my least favorite Kanto Pokemon, but I can't ignore that, how good that moveset sounds either. Really no other way to take it. Electabuzz. Let's see. Hmm. I'd say Thunder Punch, Light Screen. Or Thunder Punch, then Light Screen slash Thunder, depending on how you want to take it. Then Screech and Quick Attack. Maybe not the best. But what you are getting is... Something pretty good, although I'd rather at least keep Light Screen on board. Uh, no, no, I don't think it's A tier. Um, gosh, um, probably better than Rapid Ash and Arcanine at the very least. Magmar. Now I can tell you one thing. Confuse Ray, Smoke Screen, Flamethrower. For sure. Is that out of running? Yeah, honestly, Fire Punch, Smoke Screen, Confuse Ray, Flamethrower for Magmar. Which I know, two fire moves. Oh no, fire is one of the worst types in Gen 1. I don't think there's much else you can do about that. Um... In between Magmar, like in between Charizard and Ninetales, I think. Like, like somewhere in between them. On one hand, you're getting a trapping move. Actually, maybe lack of trapping move might be a little bit annoying. Now. Okay, we'll drop it here, but that's about as far as I'm willing to go. <laughs> Pensa, Pensa! Okay, instantly Seismic Toss. Like, Seismic Toss slash Swords Dance Vice Grip would be my immediate first choice for a moveset on level up only. Um... Probably above like the buzz. I mean, you you can at least like Swords Dance boost Vice Grip, and Vice Grip isn't like weak, weak. It's not like the weakest move in the game. I think you could get something done with it. No shot. Taros. Pokemon I'm working on on a solo, solo run right now. Ooh, yeah. Level up moves are bad. Take down, tackle, stomp, and then tail whip or leer, depending on which one you thought would help. Like depending on which one you like more aesthetically, I guess. It was stomp. 
tackle takedown. Uh, I think. Because Radicate at least gets Hyper Fang and Super Fang. Taros. Uh, yeah, Solo Run. Wow. The, you know, for being so good in OU. Yeah, that, that does allow TMs. This is an OTM tier list. As far as Gyarados, Magikarp doesn't really impact it very much. Gyarados. Yeah, yeah, we just skip over Magikarp entirely. Uh, honestly, for only using level up moves, I think Lance had the right idea. Dragon Rage, Leer, Hydro Pump, Hyper Beam. The first Pokemon to learn Hyper Beam via level up. And being immune to ground type moves doesn't come up as often as you might think. I guess unless you're in the yellow version. Oof. I feel like Hyper Beam after some leers would just be like, dude. But it does require a setup. Uh... I guess we can maybe put Gyarados above Hypno, because I still feel like that would be good on just level up alone, but then you're vulnerable to electric types, which is like kind of frequent, especially if you're doing it solo against Surge. And you. Unless you started as Gyarados, you're not getting all of the crazy strong good moves. <laughs> which, oh well, that just happens. I guess. Now, Lapras, I feel like I'd have a far easier time. I'm trying to be really selective about what makes it into the S tier as well. Yeah, Body Slam, Confuse Ray, Ice Beam, Hydro Pump. Extremely self-explanatory. You get Paraflinching, a really strong water move, and you can freeze. Yeah, probably above Jinx. Wait. Actually, probably below Jinx, because lovely kiss. Yeah, I know Lapras can learn Sing. You may want to use that instead, but para flinching sounds far more possible here. Yeah, maybe there. Actually, no. Because you might not be allowing items. <sighs> Lapras and Sea King feel interchangeable. Ditto, again, uh... It ditto. It falls into the technically possible area, but it would still come up to, like, about there, and that's like, ew, this thing is, like, terrible. What are you doing with your team? And I do have to do ditto solo eventually. I am not looking forward to that at all. Then we have to deal with Vaporeon, Jolteon, and Flareon, which, okay, Vaporeon, no TMs. What's the best moveset you can snag out of that in general? Like, Hydro Pump, Bite. Yeah, Hydro Pump, Bite, Acid Armor. Um, hmm. Yeah, I guess I'm just going with that Hydro Pump, Bite, Acid Armor, and actually Mist, with how often the opponents like to lower your stats. But it still isn't that great overall, especially with the fact that it's tied to a stone. Um, probably still a little bit better than Pikachu, though. Speaking of Jolteon, double kick, agility, pin missile, thunder. Yeah, sometimes the last four are like the best. And at least you get coverage on Jolteon, so probably just slightly above Electabuzz. We should have wrote this out or something. Flareon. What have we got for you? Yeah, Fire Spin. Yeah, probably Fire Spin, Leer, Bite, Flamethrower. Or, I guess, Tail Whip if you still have it. <laughs> Might be possible in Flareon's case.
Yeah, but that doesn't feel right. But at the same time, it's like, Fire Spin as a trapping move, maybe I'm just over-centralizing the importance of trapping moves on some Pokemon. I mean, well, Smog wouldn't be of any help. Unless you really want that poison chance. It does poison fairly often when it does hit. But that's what you'd need Sludge for. Yeah, Fire Spin, Leer, Bite, Flamethrower. Doesn't sound like the most impressive move set, but what you gonna do? Oh, Porygon's also really easy. Side Beam, Recover, Agility, Try, Attack. I mean, hey, Porygon's a pretty fine Pokemon. But, you know, we got Psy Beam, and, and Recover is huge. Yeah, Recover is pretty huge, but probably not much better than Golbat. Honestly, you'll be hitting harder from the special side than the physical side, unless you were using Sharpen the whole game. So I guess Agility slash Sharpen. And sharpen boost attack like meditate does. That doesn't sound like a bad idea, right? Moving on to Omastar. Let's see. Withdraw horn attack spike cannon hydro pump. Our Lord Helix has a semi decent move set. <laughs> Or I guess you could replace Horn Attack or Spike Cannon with Leer. Probably Spike Cannon, so withdraw Horn Attack, Leer, Hydro Pump. I feel like it'd be somewhere in here. Maybe there, because the Rock Typing can sometimes be a really big problem. Then we're going to jump in the Kabutops, a Pokemon that I personally like a lot. One of my overall favorites back in the day. And honestly, I would just say Slash, Harden, Absorb, Hydro Pump. At least a Harden will boost the special damage. <laughs> and Absorb is, like, really bad. <laughs> Uh, no, it can't be better than that. Um, well, maybe not even B tier. Um, well, maybe a tiny bit better than Gold Duck. Maybe a tiny bit better than Gold Duck. Okay, Aerodactyl. I yeah. Okay, I would just say Wing Attack, Agility, Bite slash Takedown, depending on what you value more, and Hyper Beam. Aerodactyl can still technically get through Agatha and Wing Attack alone. Um... Yeah, either Marowak or Firefest would still be probably better. Pekka does the same damage as Wing Attack anyway. Snorlax. I don't remember this thing getting da damaging non damage damaging non normal moves. Yeah. And I was right. Let's see. Body Slam. And yeah, Body Slam, Hardened, Double Edge, Hyper Beam is probably what would work best. I don't know, I just feel like Harden would help more. Maybe you can do, like, Body Slam, Harden slash Rest. Depending on which one you'd want, but... Yeah, Storm Lacks would just be better wiggly tough in that case. Especially since it actually has good HP and good attack. Wiggly tough is, like, moderately good attack. Wiggly tough is just faster. <laughs> God. Yeah, all three of the best Gen 1 OU Pokemon are down in here. Articuno? This should be pretty easy. 
Yeah, Peck Ice Beam Blizzard Agility. Honestly, not even bad. Yeah, you get two ice moves. You still get Peck, which is something. Uh, although Lapras still has more variety, and I'd still say he's a little bit more useful. Now we're going on to Zapdos. Uh, let's see, Zapdos. Probably Thunder, Drill Pack, Agility, Light Screen? Again? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, throw all these guys right here. That just feels right, you know? All right, now for Moltres, um, probably the worst of the three legendary birds, even though, again, it is my favorite based on cosmetics alone. Um, yeah, Fire Spin, Leer, Agility, Sky Attack. That's Why doesn't it learn Flamethrower in Gen 1? <laughs> Although, I feel like Moltres is very significantly knocked down from... <laughs> oh, excuse me, a bunch of the other fire types. Probably even farther down than this. Um, uh, probably there. And I hate to say that. Then we'll have to take another quick look at Dragonite. Yeah, you have to run Dragon Rage to be able to hit Agatha on a solo run, but that would... Need like all the PP possible. Like, strictly, you would probably need to PP up Dragon Rage just to get through Agatha. And yet, I'm seeing Agility, Wrap, Dragon Rage, Hyper Beam as a, like the best strictly level up moveset. And Dragonite would need item support. To do well. On a team it would be far better. Then, you know, Dragonite can't handle something, just switch it out. And it does have the highest base attack in the game besides Missing No. But Missing No would suck. It only gets three moves, two of which are the same one. Mewtwo, okay, just level up boobs. Uh, this should be easy enough, let's see. Psychic Recover, Amnesia Barrier? Easy. Just level up moves? Oh yeah, for sure. And, uh, yeah, just because you can boost both defenses and your special at the same time and heal yourself immediately over Alakazam and Polyrath. But you might not get far enough to learn Barrier and Amnesia. Either, so it's like, hmm. Might be able to learn Barrier before the end of the game. Then be like Confusion, Barrier, Swift, Psychic. Maybe? And if that is the case, it might be better off there, but... Mewtwo has better stats anyway, so we'll just stick it there. Now, Mew is the Pokemon that's, like, the most gutted, you know? Yeah, Mew just becomes, like, the most gutted Pokemon because it can learn every TM in the game. And it only gets five level-up moves normally. Transform. Like, I don't think I'd be using Transform, to be honest. Be pound, mega punch, metronome, psychic. Um, yeah, that doesn't really sound that great, but the stats alone do, but the stats do help at least. I see where I want to make the cutoff point. Um, maybe there. Yeah, I, I, I still think me would be really good, but how limited its level up move pool is. It's like, oh, bro, come on. And Mew would be right there. And it would be fine. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm going to upload this anymore, but... Yeah. 
I will listen to it, see how I feel, but for now... Yeah, this is just how I'm feeling about all of this. Yellow doesn't impact very much, but where it does impact it is only slightly. That's the only reason Pikachu and Raichu are in here at the same time. Anyway. Yep, just to review the tier list, I think S on no level up, like level up moves only, would be Mewtwo, Alkazam, Polyrath, specifically in that order. A, Victory Bell, Slowbro, Jinx, Lapras, Articuno, Sea King, Cloyster, Charizard, Mew, Flareon, Ninetales, Dugtrio, Golem, Gyarados, Hypno, Starmie, Venomoth, Magmar, Gengar, Scyther. Only because of yellow is Scyther up here. B, Kingler, Tentacruel, Muck, Blastoise, Vileplume, Venusaur, Machamp, Dugong, Porygon, Golbat. Seedra, Omastar, Pinsir, Zapdos, Jolteon, Electabuzz, Rapidash, Arcanine, Primeape. C, Dodrio, Moltres, Spiro, Vaporeon, Pikachu, exclusively from Yellow. Butterfree, Mr. Mime, Raichu in general, Kabutops, Golduck, Hitmonchan, Parasect, Executor, Bagdaton, Farfetch'd, Marowak, Aerodactyl, Nidoking, Tangela, Onyx, Pidgeot, Beedrill, Dragonite, Weezing, Sandslash, Arbok, Nidoqueen, Clefable, Ditto, and D, F, Hitmonlee, Kangaskhan, Rhydon, Snorlax, Wigglytuff, Persian, Lickitung, Electrode, Raticate, Tauros, Chansey. It's like with Ditto, it's still technically possible to beat the game, but whatever. Anyway, that has been Sword Donald Goofy 99, and I'll catch you all next time. Peace out.